welcome back in this lecture we would address certain aspects of proton conduction in the context of proton exchange membrane fuel cell central to proton conduction in most of the low temperature fuel cell is this ionomer the commercial trade name for this ionomer is uh, nafion this indicates that this word is copyrighted um, by a particular commercial company. Um, so the ionomer has two parts. One part is flu fluorinated polyethylene. This is just um, polyethylene wherein hydrogen is replaced by uh, fluorine. Let us... Uh, we'll come to why we need to be doing this um, in, um, in a minute. The other part is this part, which is sulfonyl uh, fluoride vinyl ether. So the main thing to notice is that this has a proton and the rest of the side group is negatively charged. That is an anion that is attached to a polymer background. So if you want a proton conducting membrane, um, the sol solution is highly acidic. That's what you mean by um, proton conducting membrane. So this is um, a cation exchange membrane and the specific cation that is being exchanged is the proton. Typically, the environment which is acidic in nature is highly corrosive. So if you want a medium that is stable in corrosive environment, there are not many um, such medium. And especially if you want uh, a gel or a softer material that is highly stable in an acidic medium, we need to have special condition. The reason why this backbone is fluorinated or much of these um, carbon atoms are fluorinated. It, it is because that the fluorinated uh, backbone and the rest of uh, the structures that are present here are highly stable even in the presence of um, acidity. So it is not very easy to make such fluorinated polymers. So a replacement of this structure by any other um, polymer is not a trivial matter. So that is why Nafion dominates uh, in all these applications. So it is not only in the context of fuel cell that this is important. It is also important in the context of chloralkali industry. So this is an uh, important industry which um, generates chlorine, uh, chlorine and as well as NaOH. So it is claimed that 3% of electricity that is used in advanced economies goes into chloralkali industry. So this is probably the largest electrochemical um, industry. Um, and chlorine and NaOH are large commodity chemicals. So all this tells you the importance of Nafion um, in broader context of electrochemical systems. Let's uh, move on. So this structure, um, as I mentioned, it is perfluorinated ionomer. So all these backbone is fluorinated. And because it's an um, charged polymer, these are ionomers. It is a copol copolymer of two species. One is a tetrafluoroethylene, this uh, fluorinated polyethylene, and this species that I mentioned um, earlier. So it is a bicontinuous nanostructure. Uh, let's uh, understand what we mean by this. Bicontinuous, that is there are two regions which are continuous. It is uh, They need to be continuous because 
they need to provide a pathway for proton conduction. It is a nanostructure um, because these are uh, these regions are of the, the length scale, relevant length scale is of the order of nanometers. The two structures have a distinct uh, flavor. One part of the structure is highly hydrophobic. This is Teflon-like uh, structure, which is highly resistant to corrosion in the presence of an acid. That is, this part is hydrophobic. And the rest of the structure, it is hydrophilic. So it this entire structure is made up of hydrophobic regions and hydrophilic regions. Uh, regions and they have to be continuous for uh, the conduction of proton. The important feature is that the transference number for proton is one. So let us, uh, we have already looked at what we mean by transference number. Uh, if you are unsure, please look at this lecture wherein we elaborated the meaning of transference number. So it if you can represent um, current versus potential relationship using a relationship that is akin to uh, Ohm's law, this is applicable in the absence of uh, concentration gradient. We define transference number in that context. So transference number refers to the current carried by a species I. So this is the current carried by species I. The denominator indicates uh, the sum total of current carried by all species. When all the transference number should add up to one, it, when we say the transference number of proton is one, that means proton is the only current carrying um, species in this system. Um, so, the proton conduction in nephion membrane is um, very high. That, that is, the conductivity of uh, nephion is rather high. So, in general, um, with respect to electrochemical systems, we can classify three kinds of conductors. There are electronic conductors in the electrode, which are fairly high conductivity. And all the rest are ionic conductors. And within ionic conductors, you can have two classes of conductors. One is proton. And all the rest of ionic conductors have lower conductivity compared to a proton conductor. Why proton conduction is special um, is because a lot of aspects of proton conduction is quantum mechanical in nature. We cannot do justice to this topic within the scope of these lectures because there are lots of elements of uh, quantum tunneling that is involved in proton conduction. But we'll give a broad brush qualitative um, understanding of the issues involved. To get to this, we will discuss proton conduction under two mechanisms. One is called the Grothus mechanism. Another, another is referred to uh, as the vehicular mechanism. Qualitatively, this is fairly descriptive. Um, we will just give you an idea of what these two, the difference between these two mechanisms. One may think that the proton is dissociated from this backbone and further protonated. Or you may think that the proton is always attached to this backbone. So this is the main difference. In one mechanism, the proton is dissociated and solvated. That is to do with the vehicular uh, mechanism. Here, the protons, once they are dissociated from this backbone, um, diffuse uh, depending upon its concentration gradient or 
depending upon the the direction is uh, dependent upon the reasons for proton transport. Um, so in one mechanism, in the vehicular mechanism, the solvated proton is dissociated. Uh, and in the other mechanism, it's not never completely dissociated from the backbone. The proton hops from one sulfonate species to another sulfonate species. Um, and this hopping mechanism to model it quantitatively, we need a lot of quantum mechanical concepts. Uh, and we are not going into these mechanisms in this lecture or in any of this lecture in this uh, series. But such features that such quantum mechanical features are important to explain why proton conductivity is rather fast, um, rather rapid compared to all other um, ion conductivity. So the main thing to notice is um, one in one spe one mechanism, proton is never completely dissociated from the backbone. In the other mechanism, in this mechanism, it is solvated proton is dissociated. But the overall important uh, thing to note is that proton conductivity is rather high compared to um, other conductivity. For example, in lithium-ion battery, we would require lithium conductivity, but lithium conductors conductivity is never as much as a proton uh, conductive membrane. Moving on, what is important for proton conduction in these membranes is the water content in the ion number. So to quantify this aspect, we use this uh, lambda, which gives you the number of water molecules that is present in the entire system divided by number of uh, sulfonic acid groups. It is important to understand, even in a proton conductor, the membrane as such is neutral. The amount of sulfonic acid groups with this negatively charged is equal to the amount of protons that are present. Um, these are exchangeable protons, but overall the membrane is net neutral. And because these are highly polar, um, you would anticipate that there are waters of solvation surrounding uh, these polar groups and the extent of water that is present uh, will also influence the extent to which the cation can dissociate from the anion groups. If you look at this quantity, that is lambda, which is plotted in the y-axis, it is dependent on um, a particular quantity that is plotted on the y-x-axis. What is the kind of experiment we are imagining here? Let's say you have this membrane, let's say nephion membrane, that is exposed to water vapor. So a measure of uh, activity of water vapor is given by this quantity. So here we are, this x-axis, what we are plotting here is the partial pressure of water vapor uh, divided by the total uh, at pressure. So nephion, let's say, is exposed to um, water vapor. So the partial pressure of water vapor can go from zero. That is the entire, um, in, in when you say at this point, zero indicate there's no water vapor present. And um, the in the um, atmosphere here, when, when you say this number one refers to all the atmosphere is made up of water vapor. So as you increase this quantity, that means the amount of water vapor that is present um, in the medium that is exposed to 
nephion increases. As this increases, the water content in the nephion membrane increases, uh, which is again intuitive. Uh, the lambda, that is the amount of water that is present inside the membrane, increases with the increase in water vapor content uh, to which nephion is exposed to or to which the ionomers is exposed to. What is also important is that uh, it is very hard to remove the amount of uh, the last remaining water uh, that is present in the membrane. Even when you decrease the amount of water content in the membrane, the last remaining water molecules are very highly um, interacting with the polar groups that is present in the membrane. Why is this important? The conductivity of proton is directly related to the water content. So the conductivity can be fitted to this formula um, wherein A and B are some constants and conductivity is directly proportional to lambda. So if you want to have good conductivity um, in these ionomers, they have to be filled with sufficient amount of water. In the next lecture, we will look into an important uh, aspect of uh, transport, uh, which is the proton conduction is also coupled to neutron water molecular uh, conduction that will be elaborated in the next lecture. Thank you.